students today we are going to discuss two types of plant life cycles first one is the haploid life cycle and second one is the diploid life cycle of plants so let's start with the first part that is the haploid life cycle of the plants you can see a diagram is here this is a diagram representing the life cycle of haplontic type in plants under this you can see starting with the gametophyte gametophyte is the main plant vegetative body and it is always haploid and it produces male and female gametes it produces male and female gametes the process by which male and female gametes are produced is known as gametogenesis and these male and female gametes are always haploid after gametogenesis when these male and female gametes are produced then they will fuse together one end of male gamete and one end of female gamete they will fuse together through the process known as syngamy and after their fusion they will form a zygote the zygote is diploid it is 2n and this zygote will undergo division through the process of meiosis and after undergoing the process of meiosis this zygote will form spores these spores are again haploid in nature and these spores will in turn form male and female gametes because it is a life cycle so it will keep on going let's revise it once again so that it's clear to you first of all gametophyte is the main plant vegetative body okay and it is producing male it is male and female gamete gametophyte is either male gamete or female gamete or both next is this is these male and female gametes are formed by the process of gametogenesis and these male and female gametes will fuse together through a process known as syngamy to produce a zygote which is diploid to end in nature this zygote will undergo meiosis to form spores these spores are haploid and these spores produces gametophyte so this is all about the haplontic life cycle why we are calling it haplontic because the major you can see the major dominant photosynthetic phase is haploid and the minor photosynthetic phase is diploid so because of the major dominant photosynthetic phase it is known as haplontic life cycle this life cycle is found in many of the algae such as volvox spirogyna and some species of gametogonads now we are moving on to the diploid life cycle of plants or diplontic life cycle of plants you can see with the process of gametogenesis undergoing meiosis gametes are formed these gametes are haploid after undergoing gametogenesis through the process of meiosis gametes are formed these gametes can again be male and female these male and female gametes will again fuse together through the process syngamy to produce zygote and the zygote is 2n because two haploid cells are meeting or fusing to form a diploid zygote this 
kinetic phase has been changed to diploid. Under this, the dominant photosynthetic phase was haploid. And under diplontic life cycle, the dominant photosynthetic phase, the major dominant photosynthetic phase is diploid. So starting again with the process of gametogenesis, gametes are formed which are male and female. These male and female gametes will fuse together through the process of syngamy to produce a zygote which is diploid in nature. This zygote will produce sporophytes which are again diploid in nature. These diploid sporophytes through the process of gametogenesis produces gametes which are haploid in nature. So this is called diplontic life cycle of plants. Why is it called diplontic? Because the major phase, the major dominant photosynthetic phase is diploid in nature. Examples are all seed bearing plants. Okay, example you can have one more. Fucus is there. Gymnosperms also come under this. All gymnosperms. All seed bearing plants means all gymnosperms and angiosperms. I am going to write here. Fucus. All gymnosperms and angiosperms because gymnosperms and angiosperms are seed bearing plants. In our last lecture we discussed about gymnosperms and 